guys, bro. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be doing something that we've never done before. Today, we're gonna be busting food myths for the very first time. Woo! I'm excited about this. This reminds me when I used to test TikTok recipes, but now I'm testing food myths. I've got a bunch of myths to test today, so let's get started. We're gonna see which ones are true and which ones are lies. And if you like these kind of videos, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe, it's free, and ring the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. Now, without further ado, let's test the first food myth. First food myth, you can shape pancakes with cookie cutters. We're gonna test that over here. You also need to coat it in oil. So we've coated these in oil. And this is a really simple one, like the Mickey Mouse pancakes. My dad used to make these for us, so you just place it on top. And then we're gonna do a complicated one. We've got a pineapple, we've got Batman. Well, let's try the pineapple. And then you just take a little batter, fill it up. All right, let that cook. I personally wasn't sure if this was gonna work because when you put the cookie cutter down in the pan, there's some space, like gaps in between for where it touches, and I wasn't sure, but I think the pancake batter is actually thick enough to hold shape. It looks like it's working. Oh my gosh, it works. No way. Oh, this is too cool. Oh no, shoot, okay, that was user error. That wasn't, that wasn't the myth, that was just me. Oh, okay, I took it out a little too soon. It needed to cook a little bit more, so again, that's a user error. So this is the first time I've ever done it. I added too much batter, but other than that, and my terrible flip job, this actually works. Tested and works. Next food myth, you can poach an egg in the microwave. Here's the technique they use. In this cup, I've got a third cup of water and half a teaspoon of vinegar. You're gonna crack the egg inside, and then, according to this method, you take a toothpick, poke a hole into the egg, egg yolk, very gentle, did it. Cover with food safe plastic wrap, pop it in the microwave for 30 second intervals. Here we go. We're gonna check it and if the egg whites are clear, we're gonna keep going. It's not quite ready, we're gonna try another 30 seconds. Here we go. Oh, we heard a pop, stop. Oh, well, right now the downside is that I can't tell what's going on. I, I've heard a pop in the microwave. I don't know if I've exploded my egg. So I've let it sit for a minute, which is the other part of the instructions. And now I'm gonna fish it out and see if we have poached an egg. Um, okay, so I did two rounds of 30 seconds. I cooked in the microwave for one minute total, and it's too cooked. Like the middle, the yolk, when it's supposed to break, this isn't supposed to be this cooked. Maybe if we timed it exactly perfect, this would work, but we followed the instructions perfectly, 30 second increments, letting this sit for a minute, and it did not work. I like making them the traditional way. That works great. I think it has to do with the water being so hot when you put the egg in it's cooking immediately versus this it's in the water it's in the microwave this food myth is busted make your poached eggs the regular way this food myth you can test if an egg is good or not in water good eggs are supposed to sink to the bottom bad eggs are supposed to float and aged eggs like they're borderline they're gonna stand up straight like this they're gonna be like this a good egg should sink and lay like that and then a bad egg should float now I couldn't get my hands on a bad egg but but I do have an aged egg and a good egg. Well, hopefully it's a good egg. It came in the batch, so we'll see. All right, I'm gonna put them in water. Let's see what they're doing. Yep. This food myth is true. My fresh egg I just got at the store is laying flat, and my aged egg, the one that I've been leaving out for quite some time, but it's still good because eggs don't go bad quickly, everybody. They actually stay good for a very long time. It's standing up, and this one's laying flat. This food myth, not a myth, it's true. If you see an egg float, don't use that egg. That's not a good egg. Also, it doesn't matter the color. Chickens lay all different colored eggs. Food myth, you can soften your cold butter with a hot glass over the top. Over here, I've got a glass with really hot water. I'm gonna go dump it out, and then I'm gonna place it over my butter. To heat up the cup, I just poured boiling water in it, and now we're gonna let it sit here for two minutes. Apparently, this is a shortcut to heating up your butter without putting it in the microwave, becoming more room temperature, more soft. Okay, it's been two minutes, let's check this butter. This myth is busted. It is nowhere near as soft as it needs to be. It is not room temperature in two minutes. It is a little softer, but it is not room temperature. If you want room temperature butter, you gotta leave it out the old fashioned way. Next food myth, I have heard this one so many times. If you drink soda, 
and pop rocks, your stomach's going to explode and you're going to die. If I survive for the rest of this video, you will know it's a myth, but let's test it. Also, I'm testing this one because I'm very confident that this is not going to kill you. I'm pretty sure growing up, I had these things together all the time. I love it. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, they really react with the soda. You do get bigger pops in your mouth, woo! But honestly, I just feel more alive, not dead. I don't know why people say this would... Oh. Just kidding. <laughs> so this myth is busted. It's actually really fun. Food myth. You can de-stem strawberries with a straw. So I've got two different sized straws here. We're gonna start at the tip of the strawberry and we're trying to core it. Kind of like coring an apple. Oh, okay. Well, with a regular size straw, it took off some of the greens and some of the core. It did work, but not all of it. So I've got a bigger straw here. I'm gonna try this one. This is like a boba straw. A bigger straw. Oh, dang it. I feel like I got more of the core, but I still didn't get all of the greens. We'll try it again. Oh, sick. Okay, I'm three for three of this not working well. So I would say that this is busted. One, one. Can it work? Yeah, but does it work consistently? No. And even when it does work, it wastes this part of the strawberry. This is still yummy and edible. So I'm gonna say this is busted. I would never do this. Food myth, oil and vinegar do not mix. I'm Italian, I love this combo. I love to dip bread in it. I love to put it over my salad dressing. And it is true, as you can see in the bowl, the oil and vinegar do not mix. I'm gonna do this with a whisk, whisk it up. They'll separate and we'll see, will they come together? Or are they gonna stay separate? Okay, whisk, whisk, whisk. At first, looks like it's combined, but as time goes on, it's starting to ball together and separate again. This food myth is true, they do not mix. But fun fact, if you want them to mix and stay mixed, you can add an emulsifier. Emulsifiers are basically like marriage counselors. They can make two things come together that did not want to be, you know what I mean? Okay, so two emulsifiers that you can add to oil and vinegar. One, a little bit of mustard or a little bit of mayonnaise. See, we're gonna add a little bit of mustard to this one. We're gonna add a little mayonnaise over here. Then when you whisk together, they're actually gonna bring them together. Look at that, you can literally see the difference in the bowl. Let me mix this one up. All right, I'm gonna show you the difference. Here's the first bowl, separated, and our second bowl, mold together. And the third bowl, I didn't do the best job whisking, but you can see compared to the first, they actually come together and stay together. So this myth is true, and now you know how to make salad dressing. And make them come together. <laughs> you can toast marshmallows over the toaster. I've got one plugged in, it's on, let's try it. I've got it on the hottest heat. I can see the sides of the toaster turning red. I have done this over the flame on the stove, but this is just a real flame, like a campfire. I've never done this over a toaster. Oh, it worked! Oh, this is nice too. Like, look how nice and golden brown that is. I'm gonna do the other side. What a cool little trick. The only thing about this, be careful not to drop a marshmallow in your toaster, because I'm not sure you could clean that. Whoa! <laughs> Oh my gosh, they're perfect. Oh, these are great. This smells so good. This food myth is true, and it's really good. Food myth, when you freeze an onion, it will make you cry less when you cut it. Now I put this in the freezer 20 minutes ago, and the myth is if you pop it in the freezer for 15 minutes or more, this should work. I even gave it extra five minutes for good measure. We're gonna cut this onion. My concern is that it would be too frozen, but it's only been in there for 20 minutes, so. Looks like it's cutting pretty well. Let me get this peel off. Let's do some slices, let's do some dices here. Woo! Woo! Now, I don't cut onions very often anyways because Mike doesn't like to eat them and the dogs can't have them. They're bad for dogs. They're toxic for dogs. So this is more of a garlic house, but I love them. So this is a real treat. I'm chopping, slopping, I'm slicing and dicing. Look at me go and I'm not crying. Now, so far, it is irritating my nose a little bit, but 
not enough to make me cry. Because I'm feeling the tinglys in my nose, I do think that this myth reduces whatever reaction occurs, but I don't think it stops it entirely because I do feel the tingles, but I'm not crying. This doesn't work fully, but it works a little. Next food myth, if you run out of ketchup, you can make your own at home with tomato sauce, a little bit of vinegar, and sugar. So I've got the regular ketchup over here on the plate, and then over here, this is the tomato sauce recipe, it has one cup tomato sauce, one teaspoon vinegar, and one tablespoon of sugar. Let's taste test it. I got some french fries right here. All right, here's the regular ketchup. Mmm, yummy. And now, the homemade one. Just tastes like marinara sauce. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this food myth is a lie. It is busted. This does not taste like ketchup. It tastes like I'm dipping my fries in marinara sauce. It would taste good on top of pasta, but this is not a ketchup. Food myth. You can toast your bread on a metal colander over the stove top if you don't have a toaster. Let's try it. I've turned this on, the flame's on. It's a metal colander, that's very important. This is on high heat, everybody. Let's see if we could toast this piece of bread. Oh my gosh, now this is getting hot. I can see the colander over here is turning brown a little. Oh my gosh! Okay, it's kind of toasty. Let's get a little bit more. Okay, here we go. Flip, oh, it's toasted! It's working, but unlike a toaster, you gotta do both sides, because now only one side's toasted. This takes a long time, and if you have an oven, you can put it on a broil setting and just put a bunch of toast in there to make toast for the whole family. Okay, well, it did work, so I reluctantly say that this food myth is true, but you're probably gonna ruin your colander. Mine's already messed up from the heat. The handles are getting a little wonky. This is turning color. And the bottom has all this stuck in it. Really stuck on there, good too. I'm not gonna be doing this myth anytime soon. Food myth, you can make a pina colada with three ingredients. Frozen pineapple, coconut milk, and rum. That's what I've got in here with a little bit of ice. Let's shake it up, let's see. Pina coladas are one of my favorite tropical drinks. I actually have a pina colada recipe that is to die for. I use coconut cream, coconut milk. I have a little bit of lime in there, a little bit of nutmeg. I have perfected my pina colada, so I'm gonna be very judgy. I even have a little bit of fun here. This is not a part of the myth. I just like to add a little umbrella to my tropical drinks. Boop. <laughs> All right, let's get a little straw. All right, here goes nothing. Can you make a pina colada with these ingredients? Yes, but the flavor is lacking. I'm not getting enough pineapple. I'm not getting enough coconut. Life is too short for bad pina coladas. I will link down below to a delicious pina colada recipe. This food myth is true, but it's a poop recipe. A one star pina colada, not a five star. Food myth, you can juice a lemon without cutting it just using a skewer. With the skewer, you go all the way through like a little lemon kebab, and you pull it all the way through, and then you're just supposed to squeeze, and the juice will come out and not the seeds. Ah! Oh, it's coming out the top as well. All right, does it work? Yes, does it work quickly? No. Under certain circumstances, if you just wanted to squeeze a little bit of lemon juice, like on top of a salad or something like that, just need a little bit, it's great for that. This is honestly kind of fun. I like the hole on the bottom and I understand it needs to go all the way through for pressure, but I don't like that it dribbles out the top when I'm squeezing because it gets over all over my hands and then it gets a little slippery to hold. But this is actually pretty cool. <laughs> Food myth. You can use the metal part of a clean wrap or a Reynolds wrap box to zest your lime. This just sounds like a bad idea, but I'm here going to do it for you guys. <laughs> it's just so weak. How do you even hold this? Now, before I had an actual zester tool, I used to cut my fingers all the time, get little cuts. This is off. This is awful. <laughs> This is extremely flimsy. I'm scared I'm just gonna cut my hand. And it doesn't zest very well. Let me show you with a tool. This is a zester, this is my favorite. Watch this. Boom. This myth 
is busted. It's almost like this wasn't made to be a zester. Zesters are made to be zesters. Here's a pro tip recommendation, a microplane, it's the best. Food myth, you can cut cherry tomatoes faster by using these two plates. They make a pretty bold statement that doing it this way is faster than the old fashioned way. I don't know if I believe it. You wanna have a plate with a little bit of a lip so it holds them in there. And then you can either do this or this, whatever you like. You just wanna make sure the knife rests on the bottom plate. Then you hold them all down gently and go across. Let's see if it works. Okay, here we go. Oh, jeez. This technique, squish some, others cut okay. If you don't care about them looking even, this might work. Did it kind of work? Yeah. Did I feel like this was very unsafe? It was just hard to do and maneuver? Also, yes, I would just cut them the regular way. It is quick and dangerous. You can cut through all of these cherry tomatoes in your hand in one swipe. Pretty great. Okay, no, no to this. Food myth, you can peel fresh ginger using a spoon instead of like a knife. I think I've done this. It was just so long, it was at the beginning of COVID. I don't know about you guys, but I love ginger and I used to make homemade ginger shots. Not only is this working, but it's a great way to get more use out of your ginger root. I also actually prefer the spoon because peeling ginger, because it's so lumpy and bumpy, is a little bit dangerous with a knife. So a spoon is a lot safer. This is really cool. It's letting me get in all the grooves everywhere. Look at this. this this food myth is true. You can use a spoon. Next food myth is about pizza, and this is old pizza. Yesterday, we ordered this last night. The myth is you can microwave leftover pizza with a bowl of water, and it's going to revive it, give it more moisture, bring it back to its former glory. Let's test it. Here I've got a bowl of water. I'm gonna place it in the middle of my little pizza slices. They're all different shapes, because it's from Fresh Brothers, and that's how they do it. All right, oh, this is so cool. Let's see. Hmm, these slices definitely have more moisture in there. This actually worked pretty well. I'm gonna say that this food myth is a win. It is true. I've actually microwaved pizza many a times before in the microwave and it comes out a little bit rubbery, but this makes it better. Next food myth, peeling hard boiled eggs underwater is easier. Now I'm not really good at peeling hard boiled eggs. This is something that I actually struggle with. Some of the eggs that I peel, they have chunks out of them because I get my nails in there. So you you know I've peeled them because they're not perfectly smooth. So I'm really hoping that this works. So I've got two hard boiled eggs, so I have two shots at this. So I'm gonna put the hard boiled egg in the water and then I'm just gonna give it a little crunch. Like I do. Okay, this is working. Was not expecting. Who peeled this egg? That took me five seconds and it's immaculate. My nails are the longest they've been in a while and I thought for sure it was gonna have claw marks in it. I'm gonna do it again to make sure it wasn't a fluke but I'm getting really excited because filling a bowl with water and doing this takes two seconds. That's not a difficult thing to add to my routine. This is easy peasy. This is just so great. This food myth is true. This is amazing. I'm impressed. I learned something today. Wow. I'm really excited about this one because it involves a cake. Not just any cake, a mug cake. One of my favorites. So this myth is that you can make an Oreo mug cake with just crushed up Oreos and some milk. In this cup, there's five crushed up Oreos, the whole Oreo, the cream, and the cookie. And then you're gonna add milk about halfway full. Then with a fork, we're gonna mix this together and cook it in the microwave for a minute and a half. Even if this doesn't make a cake, this smells delicious. That's mixed, got our paste, now let's pop it in the microwave. Here we go, here goes nothing. There we go, minute and a half. Blueberry! Whenever I start baking sweets, blueberry muffin shows up. Look at her. You can't have these because this is chocolate. I'll get you a biscuit though. You want a biscuit? Yeah, you want a Grandma Lucy's? Okay, that was a yes. Blueberry, here's your Grandma Lucy's. Yummy, yummy. All right, guys, moment of truth. Is this about to be the easiest mug cake I've ever made? Oh, I mean, it looks a little crazy, but let's check it out. Oh, wow. The top has done something, almost made like a dough-like batter, but it kind of looks like a wet batter. Texture is quite soggy. Oh, the smells great. The texture is disgusting. It's really slimy and soggy. I don't even know how to explain this texture. Oh, I can't.
can't. This myth is busted. It doesn't work. But if I played with the recipe a little bit, I think I could get it to work. Again, there's no measurements. It just says fill the cup halfway with milk. With baking, it's so specific for a reason. And here's the reason. Food myth. If you put a wooden spoon over a boiling pot, it will stop it from boiling over. So in front of me, I have some spaghetti boiling and we're gonna see if this works. Okay, it's boiling over. Let's try. Okay, here we go. Oh, I'm cranking it up a little bit. I have the spoon on there and two things just spilled over. This food myth is not really working. Even if it works temporarily, it may slow it down the reaction for a couple minutes, but then it's eventually gonna get hot enough and overspill anyways. It's also a really good way to ruin your spoon, burn your spoon and the edges touching the pot, and you should never just leave a pot unattended in your kitchen. Which brings us to our last food myth. If you throw spaghetti to a wall or the ceiling and it sticks, it's done. Let me take a bite so I know what's going on. Cooked, but on the al dente side, it's a little harder right now, but it's still cooked. So let's take that pasta, let's throw it on the ceiling, see if it sticks. Here we go. That one stuck a little bit, it sticks and then falls. And now this has been cooking just a little bit longer. This is al dente, this is more soft. Bring them over here, taste them just to make sure. Mm-hmm, that's really soft. All right, here we go again. Okay, it sticks and then falls. It definitely has stickiness to it. This food myth is busted because it doesn't tell you how cooked the pasta is. Under and overcooked pasta can stick to the wall, especially because when you cook pasta, the outside cooks first, so it can become sticky, whereas the inside part can still be a little bit undercooked. So knowing if your pasta is ready or not, based on how sticky it is on the outside, is kind of irrelevant. The best way to know if your pasta is ready is old school, just taste it. Because you can taste when it's al dente, you can taste when it's super soft. All right, that does it for busting food myths. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was so much fun for me today. I'm still upset about that mug cake recipe. Let me know if you wanna see another one of these. Specifically, I think we should do a baking myths video because that Oreo mug cake upset me so much. I could not believe that recipe is out there in the world. It's just offensive and wasting everyone's time. And I think my favorite one was peeling a hard boiled egg underwater. That was actually amazing and I'm gonna do that every time from now on. So let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see another food myth video specifically about baking. I would love that. I'd be really excited to make that so I hope you guys want to see it as well. And if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, it's free, and ring the the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. All right, thanks again for watching, you guys. Bye bye. And if you'd like to watch any other videos, you can click up here or up here or up here or up here or up here. One of these, one of these, one of these.